On this episode of Travels with Bill, we're looking at why we keep seeing photos of culverts tipped up out of the water. Before we're done, you'll know why this happens and see proof with your own eyes. Well, this was the scene in the spring of 2022 in Winkler. See how full the channel is? Well, the culverts had tipped up in the night and that made it so the water couldn't get away. They ended up pumping it over the highway just to get it moving. They've already fixed the culverts, but they're having trouble keeping up, so the tractors are there to get them going. Here's a photo from the Duck Mountains. See that culvert tipped up? Well, no water's going through it. And when no water goes through, pretty soon the road washes out like this. And hey, that's the end of the road. And of course, you end up with big problems. But why does it happen? Well, you may not believe it, but culverts can float. Here's a culvert at Columbus, Ohio's airport. See how it's up out of the ground? That happened because the culvert was full of air, the ground was pretty wet, and the culvert just raised on up out of there. Then it needed to be fixed. Here's another one. It's in a field, culvert underneath, not much dirt on top, high water table, and you bet, culvert comes out. But seriously, that happens? Well, check this one out. It's an extreme example. Kind of like we saw in the Duck Mountains, the culvert has gone all the way vertical. Of course, the water was that high, it's gone now. But can culverts really float? Well, all sorts of things can. Check out the parking lot. We're about to see a fuel tank come out of the ground. There's not a lot of fuel in it. The ground's really wet, so the air in the tank is going to float it. See the pavement buckling? No special effects here. This is a real surveillance video. And out it comes because there's so much force from the air in that tank that it could actually move the ground on top of it. If you talk to anyone that does fuel tanks, they'll know. You don't let them be empty in the springtime when the ground's wet. That's why. We're used to culverts that collapse like this. See the water slowly undermining the road here, the gravel's disappearing, the pavement's sinking down, well, and of course, pretty soon the whole thing's going to wash out. I wouldn't drive across it right now because what's about to happen is kind of catastrophic to your day if you happen to be on it at the time it collapses. And there goes the road. Check out the tree, it's gonna disappear too. Yep, goodbye tree. But Bill, you say, there's no proof of a culvert floating here. Well, the reason is we haven't watched quite long enough, so let's give it a few seconds and see what happens next. Now that there's nothing on top of that culvert, will it stay in the water like it should? Nope, up it comes. In fact, see how the end of it is bent too? Guess why that happened? The air in it. It would be a lot easier to prove this to you if you could see what's happening inside those culverts when they fail. For that, we need, well, we really need a transparent culvert, wouldn't we? Well, thankfully, Jim Shaw and the Federal Highway Administration from the United States have just the way to show you what's happening. These are a couple clips out of a video course they have about culvert design and how to make them work better. So here's our culvert. We're going to use this transparent pipe, put it in the water, and see exactly what goes on. See the air in the culvert? That's what's happening here. I know there's water all the way on top of it, but the way some culverts work is they always have air inside them. That's why you see the whirlpools and you hear that sucking noise, that's keeping the air in there. And when there's that much air in there, well, the culvert wants to float, right? The same as if you had something big underwater. Well, why not let Jim explain it to you because he's an absolute expert in this and he'll tell you what damage that air can do. And this big air pocket, particularly on a thin edge projecting like a CMP, is a real risky factor for our design because there's such a buoyant force created, it's a little bit like trying to hold a 55 gallon barrel under the water. As a result, a common failure in inlet control with this air pocket on a thin edge projecting from that buoyant force is the barrel actually rotating about the fill and bending upwards. Because of that, Federal Highway Administration recommends barrel sizes, particularly over 48 inches, should be anchored because the larger the barrel, the greater that buoyant force. So you saw how that culvert has some air in it. Well, here's another shot in the Duck Mountains. One culvert slipped up already, but the other one's still carrying water. See how it's only about half full at this end? That's the air that's going all the way back through. Here we are in Winkler, same thing. These culverts have already been fixed. The flipped up piece was ripped off. They're flowing full speed now, but see how there's still air in them? That's the same air that made them so buoyant when the water got high, the air 
popped on up, took the culvert with it. Here's Premier Heather Stephenson. These are the pieces they took off of those culverts. They ripped them off to get the water going through again. You can see the bends where each one had flipped up, and of course that was the end. So how much pressure is there? Well, here's an example of a culvert flipping itself on up. It doesn't mean the whole culvert was sticking out, of course. It simply means that there was enough air it could push the fill out of the way, like we saw with those ones floating out of the field. So if by chance the point the culvert bent was 40 foot from the entrance, the actual foot-pound force, 398,000. No wonder they bend and of course take some fill with them, and pretty soon you have a floating culvert and a really bad day. Well, that's it for this episode. Hit the thumbs up button before you leave because now you know why culverts float and check out the rest of the channel. We've got lots more to show you on Travels with Bill.